You wake up, your head hurts, your throat is in agony, you call in sick, you cancel your plans. I can't make it, I've got the flu. But do you? Are you sure it's not a cold? There are some pretty big differences between the cold and the flu you should know about before you go throwing the F word around. First of all, let's tackle the flu, or influenza virus. Although the history of the influenza virus is fuzzy, the first documentation of a flu-like illness may have occurred as far back as 2,400 years ago. Hippocrates, the Greek physician now deemed the father of medicine, wrote the following in his book on epidemics, now translated into English. The greatest and most dangerous disease, and the one that proved fatal to the greatest number, was consumption having frequent rigours, often continual and acute fevers, unseasonable, copious and cold sweats throughout. Great coldness from which they... These ailments were recurring, appearing at certain times of the year that coincided with a change in seasons. However, it is now believed that his writing was actually describing a collection of conditions including diphtheria, whooping cough, as well as influenza. It's no surprise that without proper medical treatment, a lot of people died. The common cold was reported even further back. One of the world's oldest preserved medical documents, the ancient Egyptian Ebers Papyrus, reported cold-like symptoms in 1550 before Common Era. The papyrus doesn't mention whether or not death was a common side effect for people suffering from the condition, but they may have offered relief in the form of a handy magic spell involving an incantation. Spit it out, thou slime, son of slime. The foulness rises from out the earth. This was to be chanted four times over a piece of bread soaked in human breast milk, then stuffed up inside the patient's nose. Nice. The point of this trip down ancestral viral memory lane is to highlight how long these ailments have been bothering the human race. It's likely that they've been around much longer than these documented cases, growing and evolving across the ages. Skip ahead to today, and here we all are, still suffering from both cold and flu on a yearly basis. Almost every single one of us will have experienced the common cold multiple times throughout our lives. Take a look at the cold. Up to 200 different viruses can cause the symptoms. Are you congested? Lethargic? Is your nose running? Do you have difficulty breathing without sounding like a wheezing piglet? In the lead up, there's frequent sneezing, a persistent cough, and a sore throat that feels like you've swallowed sandpaper. Let's compare it to the flu. The symptoms don't appear slowly, but hit you faster than those of the common cold and occur all over the body. You're sweating from a fever, you're shivering from the chills, you're coughing, congested, you have a sore throat, headache, every part of you aches. If this sounds familiar, then you should probably arrange a checkup with your doctor. The cold was given its name in the 16th century due to the similarity of its symptoms to that of the result of exposure to cold weather. It was assumed that you could catch a cold just from being out in the winter weather, but science has advanced since those times, and we now know that isn't exactly true. While the slightly cooler environment in the nasal passages helps facilitate the cold, you're actually more likely to catch it from contact with contaminated surfaces, or from being near others who have the virus. School classrooms, offices, buses, trains, they're all places where it can thrive and spread easily from someone sneezing and making the cold airborne. It's a good idea to take extra care of your hygiene when you don't feel well. Covering your nose and mouth when you sneeze and using hand sanitizer can go a long way to help protect the people around you from picking up any potentially dangerous germs. If you've ever suffered from the flu, you'll know how painful it can be. Your body, your joints, your muscles, everything seems to ache. But why? Most of what you feel when you're suffering isn't the flu itself, it's your body's immune response to it. The feeling of chills and a fever is your body heating up to fight the virus. Your immune system marks the virus wherever it's found and sends out white blood cells to attack it. Once they've successfully attacked the area, they secrete proteins such as interleukin-6 or IL-6. These proteins have been linked to inflamed muscles and soreness, which makes it feel like everything is aching. There are different variations of the flu, with influenza A and influenza B being the most common types. The flu vaccine is offered every year and is extremely effective in helping to protect those most at risk, notably people over the age of 65 and children under 2. But keep in mind, it isn't exclusively for them. The flu vaccine can help protect you no matter your age. Just be aware that it is preemptive protection, 
it doesn't serve as a cure for those who already have the flu. If you're aching all over, take the hint and rest up. Don't try and move around a lot. Stay warm and hydrated. Not only will it make you feel better, but it will help contain the virus and stop it from spreading to other people. There's no cure or vaccine for the common cold, because there are just so many different strains of that particular pathological nightmare. It's a pain, and it can last for a couple of weeks or longer. But throat soothing sweets, decongestants, and lots of water is your best route back to health. Unless, of course, you want to try out that ancient Egyptian milk magic, staying warm and hydrated is the best course of action against spreading the virus and getting back on your feet.